Hello everyone! Welcome to my very small YouTube channel about knitting, fiber and the community in the knitting world. Uh, my name is Isabel. I am in France. I have three sons and I have three cats. Some say it's related. And I'm filming these videos in English because I miss my English very, very, very much. I used to live in the United States, but that was over 30 years ago. And uh, I don't have any opportunity now to be talking in English. So filming the videos in English, it's my weekly practice uh, in front of you, uh, with a delay, of course. And uh, if an episode about my knitting adventures uh, sounds good to you, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. Okay, so first, what am I wearing? I'm wearing my slip extravaganza. I wore it this morning and today at work. Uh, the day is extremely hot right now in France. The weather is a bit crazy and I think it's been a bit crazy about everywhere. Uh, we went from kind of a fall season to back in not only spring but even summer. It's over 20 degrees Celsius right now. I write the equivalent in Fahrenheit on the screen. Uh, it's totally unusual for uh, October or mid-October in France. And some areas in the south of France are around 30 degrees Celsius. So uh, it's very, very unusual. The morning was a bit chilly, so I wore my slip extravaganza and I'm still wearing it, but I'm going to be telling you, I am very, very hot. So uh, uh, I may have to remove it uh, when I'm filming, but uh, along the way, but I realize I've never been filming with it after I knitted it. So I finished it. So um, yeah, I'm wearing it today and um, uh, it's, uh, of course, a pattern by Stephen West. It was um, the MCAL from two years ago. I have to say I haven't, on purpose, by choice, not joined the uh, MCAL from this year. I did not like much the shallography last year, but I have to say that Twist and Turn is getting my attention because I like what I'm seeing. So I may, I may decide to knit it once, um, you know, it's finished and I have time and uh, I make time for it. And uh, uh, if it's still, you know, of some interest to me, um, I, I'll do that. But uh, for now, um, I arranged all the colors around that ice blue color from uh, Trellis. And the browner one is also from Trellis. And I paired it afterwards, after I, uh, you know, decided this one, I want, I absolutely want it in the shawl. I decided on um, the very cold gray and uh, um, the kind of cinnamon tone by uh, Zach and Yarns. Um, I link my project down below. You'll see which kind of yarn I've used. And uh, I have a few blog posts um, on that matter. Okay, so my slip extravaganza, and I'm, I'm sweating in my slip extravaganza, but what would not I do for um, a video with it? Okay, so what is on the menu today? Uh, I have one finished object, and this finished object is part of a series I knit for Christmas presents for the younger people, my sons or their girlfriends uh, for Christmas. So uh, I'm gonna, you know, summarize that and tell you what kind of other uh, gifts I'm gonna be knitting next. I have two work in progress. One you've already seen and I won't elaborate too much. I will show you, but I haven't been knitting much on it because it's dark, it's my Sorel sweater. And it's complicated for me to be knitting at night on a very dark uh, fabric. So I almost only knit during the day, during the weekends. So it hasn't been growing very much. And the second work in progress that you haven't uh, seen at all. And I do not think I've ever reported on my first uh, finished object um, 
for Christmas. So we are going to be to moving next to that. So my first and yes, only finished object I have for today is a Manhattan hat, Manhattan hat by Tori Yu uh, that I knit in with this acrylic yarn my mother uh, gave me. And I made it for my eldest son, girlfriend. Her name is Pauline. That's the feminine part of Paula. <laughs> it's a coincidence. And uh, um, yeah, I will be making one for myself because I like very much the triple brim part and I like it being a bit higher on the head. So um, yeah, I liked it. It was a very easy knit, a clever construction and a clever decrease here to make that type of uh, top of the hat that sits on the head. And uh, I like the look of it and I like the way I, it wears. So uh, this, uh, this hat associated to one of my uh, trendy little scarves in the same yarn. So that was one of the first one I made, one with a motif here. Um, this one is gonna be my uh, present to Pauline, my ed eldest son, uh, Samuel's girlfriend. Uh, so last time I show you the um, a muscle burr hat I knit for Morgan. Morgan is my youngest son, Paulin's girlfriend. Um, so uh, I'm not sure, you know, she will be able to wear it on either side. Um, one thing, I, I think I talked about it last time. I think my next muscle burr is going to be the perfect one because this one, the first one I knit was a bit too big. It was one for myself with uh, Fiori from La Bien-Aimé, uh, a Merino singles from La Bien-Aimé, and I'm even considering ripping it out and knitting it again uh, because it's really too big. And I placed an elastic here at uh, the mid part, but I don't like too much the way it sits on my head. This one is better. Uh, I made one size uh, smaller. <laughs> I should have, you know, I should have used the row counts or the rows and the length of, of the uh, largest size I need uh, last time. Uh, anyway, I think it's going to be okay because her head is a bit smaller and I think she doesn't like much the hats when they are very uh, slouchy, so I guess she will wear it with the brim folded and uh, uh, it's gonna be her Christmas present with one of the small scarfettes by Emba O'Brien. So this is the same yarn for um, that my mother gave me. The, uh, um, the gray yarn is also an acrylic yarn and uh, um, the little scarfette from Emba O'Brien. And when I showed it to my son, my son said, I want one. So there is a second one <laughs> for him. So that's uh, another uh, Christmas present. And uh, uh, so I have several other ideas uh, for Christmas presents. I want to knit a couple more of my um, trendy little scarves. And I want to try something that looks like brioche, but which is not, and two color brioche, which is, which is not. So I think I, I need to uh, look at the stitch pattern, but I think if you do some kind of uh, fisherman's uh, ribs, so that, you know, you need one row below every, um, uh, every knit stitch uh, on every other row, but, if you do that with one color, I and mean, on the next color, you need one row below for the pearls in another color, every other row, I think you get to do some kind of pattern that looks like a one by one rib and that looks like um, brioche without being brioche. I need to investigate that because I, I'm not sure I recall who just talked about it. 
um, in a video, but not just talked about it because I'm very far behind uh, watching all the videos I'm used to be watching. And uh, um, uh, so I need to retrieve that kind of stitch pattern, but I think I, I'm going to do one like that uh, for my uh, sister-in-law and I'm going to be doing one cream one, just a plain cream one, such as this one for my own mother. So I have two more of these to knit. Um, these are very quick knits. Uh, you just need 50 grams or even less, depends, uh, of yarn. And, you know, it's very easy, very quick. Um, I've seen people do uh, two colors, use two colors, one half in one color, the other half in the other color. That's another idea. I'm going to try with this uh, special uh, stitch or color work. And uh, uh, if it works, I'm going to update at some point uh, the pattern. And, but I will let you know what I've done. And you can also choose to marl it. Um, I ripped out my Rosa at the Bowl uh, wrist warmer and I to claim back all my cocoon uh, yarns. And I think I'm going to knit another one double with the cocoon yarn and marl it. You know, have one beige. If I have enough, I have to measure how much I have, weigh out how much I have and one beige color all the way through and uh, I marl it with um, um, my other leftovers of other colors. And if I do not have enough, just you know, marl it from one color to the other, um, uh, holding two strands of yarn. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make at least two additional ones, that's for sure. Uh, and maybe one more for myself uh, with uh, my left, my cocoon leftovers. Uh, uh, yeah, my and and I'm gonna try um, uh, color work and marling and see how it goes and if I like it. And I will report on that, um, of course. Okay, so uh, my first. Uh, work in progress that you have already seen is my Sorel sweater. If you recall, I'm using La Bien-Aimée's Merino singles held double with uh, her mohair uh, in Winterfell. And uh, um, I'm almost out of, you see, I've, I've, I've knit a bit. I'm almost out of the... Um, air guitar color, the one that I like so much. Um, I'm almost out. I think I have enough to complete, to finish the fade pattern uh, without running it, running out of it and uh, um, without having to cut short the fade. But if I have to cut short, I will. No problem. I want to use as much of this uh, air guitar color as I can. And I'm fa fading it in storm. Um, that is a darker a gray, a lighter gray with uh, blue, mostly blue speckles, but a bit, a bit of yellow, a bit of um, uh, other, you know, other colors. There are, yeah, mostly blue, a bit of green and uh, on a gray base. So not much purple because I there was another uh, uh, color I could have chosen to uh, replace Fiori, but uh, that was too pink and too light, but I did not like it much because they were, that, there was too much purple in it. So here I'm, you know, the last motif was almost entirely with, uh, uh, storm here, but you still can see some accents from, um, you know, air guitar. And I, I think I'm going to have enough to finish um, the fade, all the rows from the fade. I hope, I think so. I, I think I have maybe two, three rows with 
air guitar, I think I will have enough. So, okay, and then I'm gonna have to see whenever I separate for the sleeves. Once I've separated for the sleeves, it's gonna be much easier because it's gonna be either pearl, 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 or knit, 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 if you decide to, if I decide to knit it inside out and, um, and do only knitting, but I'm afraid my tension between the pearl parts here and the reverse stockinette once uh, I do only knit, 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 and uh, if I knit inside out for, to have the uh, reverse stockinette out, I'm afraid the tension is going to be the same. And when I, I don't mind purling, so when I made my summer sorrel, I decided to be purling all the way through. So I see what I decide to do once uh, I am about the moment to separate for the sleeves, once the yoke is the way I like it and everything. So, um, but I'm almost considering purling all the way through so that the tension be, uh, is, you know, homogeneous between the yoke and the rest of the body. So, uh, yeah, I will let you know once I get there what um, I decide. Okay, so I want to close the window. Someone is playing with a chainsaw or something, <laughs> or a windblower or whatever, and it's extremely loud. It's my neighbor. I hope you won't hear that sound. And if when I replay, I, I will listen to the footage uh, right after I finish. And if, if you hear it too much, I guess I will have to record it again. Anyway, my next work in progress, which you haven't seen yet, uh, is the shawl I cast on. <laughs> I'm almost finished because it's an easy knit and with um, a lighter color, so I can knit during the night after dinner. Um, it's the one I cast on with Trelly's uh, birthday mystery box from uh, last summer. So the two yarns I received and I bought without knowing, and I will tell you after that, is uh, this one, let me see, is Orient Belt, Orient's Belt. So the theme was about myth and galaxies and everything. So Orient Belt, the darker greener one with a lot of accents, purple, orange, yellow, uh, blue, uh, dark ones too, and bright pinks and reds uh, sometimes. Uh, so this one is in her Yama base. Uh, it's 70% Merino, 20% Yak, and 10% Nylon. Very soft, very, very, very pleasant to knit. And the lighter one is in her uh, heiress base. It's Smith, and it's, so it's the lighter yellow base one. It's, it, it, it is, on a, I think, on a white, creamier base, but the overall color from afar is mostly yellow with accents, orange, pinks, blues, greens, almost all over the rainbow. So it's in, so her heiress base is 85% merino and 15% nylon. Both of them very, very pleasant to knit. I, you know, I already used them in my slip extravaganza, some of her yarns, I, I like them. I know I like them. I've already knit two of her mystery boxes, that's the, uh, third one I'm, I'm buying. I have to say, I'm not too much, even though I have a yellow uh, sweater, um, I'm not too much into the yellow, green, and green um, color range. It's not much into my comfort zone. So I had, you, you see, I, I'm not sure with my skin tone. Anyway, I had to look quite a bit for a pattern, for a shawl, because uh, she had sh suggestions, but I'm, I did not like the, uh, I was not interested by the suggestions she had. That, so a shawl, I wanted a shawl, a shawl that would use two skeins or less. 
uh, of two different colorways that would be easy to knit. And I found one. I've talked already about it, but I wasn't decided. And I decided I was going to use uh, the Aglea shawl from Mayu KP. And Mayu, it's a free pattern. It's a free pattern. I think it's on either on her blog or on her site or something. Um, and Mayu designed this shawl. So I'm going to place a picture first so that you can see it. Designed this shawl for uh, two skeins uh, of trellis yarns. Perfect. Perfect. So um, this is the one I have right now. I'm almost finished. <laughs> I've knit a lot on this one. So you start, is it the right side for you? Yes. So you start uh, in gutter and you increase. I made a mistake here. I either, you know, I did not slip. I think I did not slip the stitch or I lost one or something. Uh, maybe I will try to see if it blocks out. And if it doesn't, if I do something to, you know, fake a, a slip stitch here and if I can't, I won't and it will remain that way. So um, with a slip stitch uh, edge on one side, an I-cord edge with uh, three stitches on the other side. So you increase, you increase with, it's not yarn overs, you knit front back and it makes little holes, holes for the increase. So the first part is that way. Then you do some eyelets with the darker part, the darker part, sorry, the darker yarn. Then you do short rows uh, for the second or th third section. Another eyelet um, part, another big, bigger eye cord. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> excuse me. I, I did come back home last night. It was after nine o'clock at night and I went to teach at eight o'clock uh, this morning. So uh, I'm a bit tired. Um, so once you do all the short rows, you go back to do one uh, eyelet section with a darker yarn, then an eyelet section with um, an eyelet row with a lighter one. And then you do the short rows on a different rhythm uh, with um, the darker color. So that's where I am at. I think I haven't read ahead, but I've seen, um, I've seen the pattern, you know, the shawl itself. Uh, I think there is one uh, eyelet row with the lighter color and then um, a finishing, I'm not sure if we finish with the dark one or the light one. Anyway, I'm not far away from finishing. I have to say, honestly, that I would not have picked a yellow and a green color that way. And I have to say that in some way, I like it quite, quite a bit. So do you see it's gonna be that way? And here I'm gonna to have to finish. it. Um, I like it quite a bit. I would not have bought that, for sure, for sure. But now, now that I have it, uh, it's, I, I'm happy with it. So this made me think about mystery boxes because um, uh, I really, really liked the two first ones she, uh, she, she made. One was in more in the peach pink realm, um, which it's a very easy shawl that I wear a lot. Um, and uh, 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 that I liked very much uh, with the design by Maria. And uh, uh, the second one, the pattern was by um, Butzeria, Meretz uh, Butzberger. And it was, the colors were in the green, but a murkier and darker green, uh, um, uh, darker green. So I made the coal and the hat and the mittens that, um, with that. The yellow and the very, the heavy speckle variegation 
I would not have chosen that. And now that I've made, I've knit that, I'm quite happy with it and I will see how I wear it. Um, it's more, it's a happier color. As I wear a lot of blues, I would have preferred, I guess yellow would have been fine, but a more, um, more a blue base rather than a green base. And the second thing is that um, from the color board, the two previous ones were quite close to what I was expecting uh, from the colors she had shown, not this one. So either I did not understand the color board or, you know, I did not, or it was not um, uh, close to what the real uh, skeins colors were, the one I received, because I understand, you know, with uh, indie dyes and uh, hand, dyed by hand, you can't, you can't have it all, you can't have the reproducible uh, colors. And I, I understand that, I, I'm not saying that, but uh, yeah, uh, so it has me considering now, um, would, 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 will I buy an other mystery box? I have never, I don't like to buy without knowing. And I was very, 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 very happy with the first two ones. This one, I'm a bit more on the fence and it's quite a bit of an investment. So uh, I'm not sure what I will do if she makes another uh, mystery box. There were, there were other goodies with it that I'm very happy, the little notebook I'm using right now to sketch out, you know, what I want to talk about um, in the videos. There were, there was a little pouch that I'm using. So in the previous one, it was a soap, a lip, a lip balm. I just finished a few weeks ago um, after having using it about every day. So, um, I, I, I was, I, I'm overall very happy, but will I do it again? Um, I'm not quite sure I'll do it again, unless the color board is really, really close to something I like a lot and I know I will wear a lot. So, um, uh, yeah, in the end, I am very happy. I had to look for this pattern I found it and uh, uh, I think it was already in my library, but I had sort of forgotten about it. And I'm very happy I'm knitting it. It's a beautiful pattern that you, you, you should have a look and uh, maybe consider at some point uh, making it. So uh, yeah, the overall project I like and I will see how much I'll wear it because even though the pink one, um, the first one, the Fresh Peony one, pink, I'm not wearing much pink, but I do enjoy wearing this one, which is more in the peachy pink uh, kind of colors. I do enjoy wearing it a lot and it goes very well a lot with all my clothes that are more on the blue side uh, than, uh, and, and the, the one, um, for the hat and the mittens and, you know, I made a call with it. That was fine. This one, the yellow part, I'm not quite sure. And I'll see how I will wear it. And I'm sure I will wear it, but I'll see how often um, I'm gonna be wearing it. So I may consider, you know, I was thinking I would buy every mystery box, at least from Trellis and maybe some other people. Now I can. I think I'm revisiting that uh, point, and I'm not sure what I'll be doing in the future. Anyway, I will tell you. Okay, so this is all I have as far as knitting for today. Uh, I'll be, if you wish, uh, uh, moving on to a bit of my uh, life updates uh, uh, in a bit. If you are not interested in two life updates, thank you for having watching so watched for so far, and uh, I hope I will see you next time.
Okay, so life updates. I'm not sure I'm gonna be saying much because there is not that much more to say about my mother um, other than some friends have called me because they were quite a bit worried about her, her loss, a memory loss and the fact that when they see her she says again and again and again and again the same things and she forgets she just talked about that a few minutes before so uh when i talk and i i told them what you know my intentions were and what i was going to be doing and everything they were and what my sister had uh you know started to have uh uh, all the uh, process to have her checked, uh, her memory checked, and um, other other things, uh, her cognitive, all of her cognitive uh, behavior checked. Um, they were quite uh, reassured because they were worried about her. So, in a way, that's what I told them. It's good you called me because um, that makes me think, and that shows me you care about her and that I knew already her neighbors were tr quite queer caring about her uh, but other friends too that you know who live further away and uh, that was quite um, quite you know reassuring to me <laughs> to to know that other people uh, uh, would you know see her and um, but what they told me is that they were thinking she was, aside from that, doing very well, and I think so. Um, so either she's masking all, you know, my father's death and her grieving and everything, or it's just in the void of her memory. She knows he's gone, and but it's all mixed up and she's not that unhappy. And, you know, good is good. So uh, I'm taking that part of her life that is good and uh, um, I'm, you know, it makes me happy in a way that to know that even though she's um, very confused about many things, uh, at least she's not unhappy and her neighbors and her friends tell me that she's not unhappy. So that's, that's good. Um, on my knitting side, uh, I told you I, I'm so frustrated I can't work on the Sorel the way I want because I enjoy this knitting process. I'm more of a product knitter. I want the finished object. I'm knitting because I want the finished object. That's also why I'm probably mostly um, a monogamous knitter or at least you know maybe maybe a sweater and a shawl and that's it um, because I want the finished object and having you know unfinished object sitting around that I'm not doing any I frog them I frogged the Rosa at the ball uh, wrist warmers for several reasons one of them was I was not knitting the second one so I prefer to frog and I like the finished object um, with the Soren with this extremely luxurious yarn I really enjoy the process of knitting I don't want to rush rush through and have the finished object because I enjoy enjoy having the yarn in my hands while I knit. But I'm getting a bit frustrated because it's a dark color and um, it's difficult for me to knit at night uh, when the light is dim, even when I have, you know, these uh, neck uh, uh, lights you can uh, use. They are made for reading, I think, but it's with uh, LED, so the, white, the, the light is quite white and I have several lighting um, strength so I can adjust and they fit me, it, it's not too, too clear, it's not too dark, but knitting with the dark, even if I place a white um, piece of cloth on my laps, it's, it's not working. I need 
more like an ambient light and not only focused light uh, to be knitting on it. So I'm quite frustrated because during the weekends I've been rushing doing many things that I have not no time to do during the week because my work schedule has been quite heavy right now. But you know, this is what I'm being paid for. Um, so anyway, uh, it, I can't work on it, not even one row per day. And uh, uh, it's a bit frustrating. So I have to deal with that. And I discover that with that very project, I am more leaning towards being a process knitter and drawing the process of knitting with that yarn. I'm sure it's the yarn. I'm sure it's the La Bienvenue's yarn that do that to me. If you ever have the chance to buy a skin or two or more and knit something with her yarns, I'm sure there are other beautiful yarns elsewhere. I'm not saying that they are the only ones, no. But if you do have the opportunity to knit with her yarns, I'm sure you will understand what I mean. So um, what I'm also thinking with that very project is that once I've knit all my stash, once I can buy some more yarn other than, you know, in, in person in a yarn store, I think I will get some other, you know, either shawl or a sweater quantity of yarn from La Bienvenue. I will have to select a project. I will have to select a color. Unfortunately, the air guitar I saw is not available on the site anymore. So I guess her, her colors change and, uh, um, you know, some of them are permanent, some of them are not. Uh, she has new bases, new young bases too, that I would like to try. Uh, but I think one of my goals, maybe one year, two years from now, and I'm not counting things that I'm going to be knitting with my mother's uh, acrylic stash, stash that she gave me. I'm not going to be, you know, placing that in the bulk of my stash that I need to be... Uh, that needs to be finished uh, so that I um, I can do that. But I will buy another shawl, big shawl or sweater quantities from La Bienvenue's because the light, the, the yarns are really, really, really extremely pleasant to be knitting with. And once, <laughs> when I can get to it, it brings me a lot of joy and happiness. And I hope I dearly hope you can place joy and happiness into your life because it's not going to be coming all by itself. And we need to actively work on that. And I hope your knitting is bringing you joy and happiness. And uh, uh, that these few minutes, uh, the half hour you've been spending with me also brought you joy and happiness. And uh, uh, thank you for uh, spending that time with me. And uh, I will see you next time.